Kamera zu früh. Ich höre nur immer nur so. in this world but we choose to not be transformed by it and it's said to renew our minds daily in the lord jesus welcome to a disciple's view i would be lying if i said i've ever been through a hurricane uh and i cannot imagine how i would respond i think i'd be afraid for my family i think i would fear for the life of my little daughter who's in fact not little anymore but in fact is you know, technically an adult I think I would fear for our cats, as, as minor as that scene when the figurehead Biden spoke about his cat and his Corvette in light of what happened in Maui. I think I would probably have fear for economics. What's going to happen? Can I pay for any of this? Will insurance cover it? I think I'd have a lot of fear. And I think that's natural for people to go through this. I'd be lying if I said I'd never been through a Firestorm. Yeah, I've, I've, I've driven up a hill in a mountain when there was a fire approaching the home of my uh, my aunt and uncle. And their their kids were home. My 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 uh, nieces, nephews, and I drove up with my grandpa. Um, and grandpa chose to disobey fire authorities, and we got Brett and Lisa out. But I'd be lying if I said that. 今日はあのシェバー浴びたんでしょ。サウナ入った。スティスティームは開いてたね。あのスティームの方はあの連続にずっとで出るから月曜日はあの時間時間があのモーター全部動かしてるから月曜日はあの。スパのほら、水蒸気あるじゃないあれが止まらないんだよねずっと出,出てるからあったかいよ、うん、どれくらいいたのえどれくらい入ったの2回入った、うん、忘れ物ないね As we began to that final descent and it was bad And the flight attendants asked us uh, to get into the crash protection position. A young woman seated next to me reached over and grabbed my hand to hold my hand. And a little kid across the aisle was screaming in fear. And I looked over at the little boy and I lied. I said, are you afraid that we're going to crash? And he said, yes. And I said, This isn't how airplane crashes happen. I've been through a lot of them. I hope God forgives me that lie. The boy relaxed, but what point was there in having him in terror? Well, we can't lie to ourselves about what's going on uh, with the hurricane. And, and from the newest part of me, I say that on purpose, from the newest part of me, the renewed part of me, I want you to know Uh, that's in Maui and now in, in Florida, that I hurt with you. Not in the same way, not at the same level. I'd be a liar to say it's even possible for me to have inside me what's inside you. When the body of Christ, when we're in the body of Christ, when a member suffers, we are all to suffer when a member hurts we are all to hurt and certainly not everybody in the path of this hurricane is is with the lord jesus or has accepted him and it doesn't mean we love them less but it means that for those of us in the body i believe that we can access the holy spirit that's in one in each of us We accept Lord Jesus and we agree to be changed by him. And we grow, agree to go on a mission with him. And the Holy Spirit is resident in us. Into us moves the kingdom of heaven. Which is an astonishingly magnificent thought. 
we know that God Almighty hears prayers. The Holy Spirit is our special helper. And I believe the Holy Spirit can help us feel the fear and the confusion of our brothers and sisters. And I believe it's a gift for us because we're all going to face fears. The Lord Jesus warned us, you're going to face trials in this life. And don't be surprised by that. And this is a trial that you can say is coming from the Lord Jesus. Yeah. 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 I guess annoying, cold, calculated use of this for politics. We might touch on that a little bit in this segment, but I would focus on it tomorrow and really out of respect for the nature of live radio. We have an opportunity to speak into this right now and to speak in with prayer. And also to take this moment as these winds rage to again apply the, the metaphor that the Lord Jesus used about wise people building their houses on these foundations, on that strong foundation of his word. Multiple places we can build. God's word never returned void. And there are people who built their houses on sand and soft foundations and so true is that of spiritual foundations. As of speaking all this, I'm still absolutely buzzing, I might say, from this experience I've had in really reading about the new earth and Randy uh, Alcorn's description of the new earth, his interpretation of it. I spoke this morning with my pastor. Uh, I attend Real Life Ministries in, in, uh, in Idaho. I spoke this morning with my pastor, Jim Putman. We do a once a month appearance. He's on my podcast. And I talked about this new love I have of the idea of the new earth, or rather not the idea, but the feeling of it. This, this suffering, and there's no doubt there's suffering, there's mental anguish, and, and perhaps there'll be perhaps there'll be loss of life and injuries. There are first responders at this moment keyed up to go into the storm and if I were their families I would be afraid I would feel fear and I might pray I might pray along the lines of asking the Lord Jesus I might say something like praying to the Father Father God I trust you in all things and I know that you are the firm foundation and I know that there will be no storms in the new earth. And Father God, we're told in the Bible so often to not fear. And I fear. Where I have this fear, Lord, please help me not have it and to trust in you. Where I worry, let me remember to be still and know that you're the Lord. Where I cannot seem to stop my hands from shaking or my worry of finances overtaking me, I would ask you, Lord, to have the Holy Spirit stop it for me, to rest in the peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that only you can provide. And I would ask you this, Lord, in the name of your uh, loving Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's easy for me to pray that because I'm 2,000 miles away. And I might also take this opportunity to point to the cultural hurricanes that are raging through this country. The cultural hurricanes, and we're going to talk at length about this tomorrow. The cultural hurricanes, for instance, uh, in California that has led their attorney general to give a speech wherein he effectively describes the family as a dark and dangerous place, simply not safe for children. He does this as he pursues the ability for teachers under cover of law to refuse to tell parents that their kids are pretending to be a boy when they're a girl or that they're getting abortions uh, or that they're sexually active and same sex or, or, or opposite sex activities at school. There's, this is being described as outing the kids, 
outing them. Well, the fact of the matter is, what that attorney general in that separate country of California describes is a case where the entire school knows that this boy is pretending to be a girl. The teachers have on the, 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 the students' files, they have notes. When they're talking with the parents, they use male pronouns for the boy. They use his given name. But at school, he's called another name, a female name, and he's referred to with female hormones or female uh, pronouns. And yes, if he wants those hormones and that surgery, they'll get it for him. That's not outing. The entire school knows except for the parents. That's not outing. That's hiding. And the undercurrent to this is this cultural hurricane. The, this is not accidental. That they choose to make the parents the enemy. It's not accidental. It's not moronic. It's not a mistake. It's not idiocy. It is a plan. And that plan is to use the cultural hurricane of this cultural revolution, which is real. Nothing that's happening is organic. It's planned. This is to eat away at the foundation of the family, to raise an entire generation of kids who believe that their parents simply cannot be trusted. Only the dear state can be trusted, and certainly not God. So we can, exp- we, can, we can have fear about this, just like we can fear the hurricane. We can worry about it, just like we worry about the hurricane. Or we can pray. And we can pray to not fear, just as we just did. We can pray to trust God. And we do more. I was reading about some of the preparations that uh, officials made in Florida, and it stands in in brutal contrast to what the sadly inept and probably corrupt officials did in Maui and Lahaina, which was nothing. I was reading about the preparation for the high water vehicles ready to go, the training, the officers standing by, the fact that um, that DeSantis there has worked with hotels to allow people to bring their pets when they have to evacuate. The preparation. Well, the countries of California and Washington are not simply bringing this ideology about this destruction of the family about in their states. They are very much following the Maoist model. I'm talking about Chairman Mao. He wrote a paper called The Six Phases of Revolution. And they're right now trying to enter us into this fifth to sixth stage, which is the removal of kids from the family, mentally or otherwise, and from God. Our preparation begins in the home with the foundation. The foundation of God's word what God knows to be true about the sexes, about genders, and what God knows to be true is truth itself. What God knows about societies that function and don't function, and that is to the heart of how we deal with one another, how we interact, even with unbelievers. And what God says... Because they're here. So, on one hand, we pray, and the other hand, we prepare, and the two come together because prayerful preparation is what's going to get people through this hurricane, God willing, and through the hurricane of the culture war. Speaking of the culture war, we're talking about these ISIS smugglers next, plus about the war in Ukraine. More truth telling. This is from the Prime Minister of Hungary. This is the Disciples' View. I'm Todd Herman. is Viewpoints with Kirby Anderson. Today is Labor Day. Although this day was set aside to honor trade and labor organizations, I believe it's a day when Christians can also consider how they view work and labor. The Bible has quite a bit to say about how we are to view work, and so I devote part of a chapter in my most recent book to a biblical view of work. First, we are to work unto the Lord in our labors. 
Colossians 3.23 says, Whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. We may have an earthly master or boss, but ultimately we are working for our heavenly master. Second, work is valuable. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4.11 and 12, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and attend to your own business and work with your hands, just as we commanded you, so that you will behave properly towards outsiders and not be in any need. He also warns in 2 Thessalonians 3.10 that if anyone is not willing to work, then he is not to eat either. The Proverbs talk about the importance and benefits of work. Proverbs 12.11 says, He who tills his land will have plenty of bread, but he who pursues worthless things lacks sense. Proverbs 13.4 says, The soul of the slugger craves and gets nothing, but the soul of the diligent is made fat. And Proverbs 14.23 says that in all labor there is profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. You know, Martin Luther taught that all work can be done for the glory of God. John Calvin taught that all should work because they were to serve as God's instruments on earth. This led to what today is called the Protestant work ethic. So let's use this Labor Day to teach and reinforce biblical ideas of work. I'm Kirby Anderson, and that's my point of view. deeper on topics like you just heard by visiting pointofview.net. That's pointofview.net. What motivates your prayer life? Why do you pray? One of my mentors, Peter Lord, used to say that the average Christian prays out of crisis or from a grocery list. In other words, their prayer life is like a roller coaster based upon their circumstances or how long their list of needs might be. For years I prayed on early Monday mornings with the men of our church, and often because I was a pastor I showed up in a body bag emotionally, but I knew I needed to come. One day I asked myself, why am I doing this? And the Lord made it very clear to me, my motive had been rooted in a lot of things that changed. The weather, my energy, the emotions, the dynamic of the prayer meeting. I learned that the only enduring motive for prayer is that God is worthy to be sought. And friend, that never changes. So today as you pray, remember, the motive for prayer is God's worthiness. This is Daniel Henderson with Strategic Renewal for OneCry.com. when doing live radio uh, the Lord takes over a segment that that didn't follow my outline and thank you God for that I obviously intended to discuss the hurricane um, but not in that way and in fact had some political stories about how people are using this to to merchandise their political beliefs and agendas and I just felt like God said don't don't do that don't do that this is a special medium because it's live and because people tune in uh, every five minutes, every 15 minutes. And God's saying, hey, maybe someone needs to hear this right now. And he would know, right? Uh, We'll continue to cover this, obviously, and we'll get into the political aspect of this tomorrow. You heard, perhaps, in the AFR news, at the top of the hour, we radio people say, about these ISIS-tied smugglers bringing... Um, Uzbekistanis into our country. And this is not what their ice is tied. I, I must remind people, and myself, most importantly, that there are people and organizations who intend to take this country down. And, and they work in government, many of them. I remind people that Barack Obama stopped, literally got in the way of an investigation that had taken years it involved the FBI and the CIA and former and, and, and foreign intelligence to find, identify, track down uh, smugglers, once with the Taliban, another time with Hamas, who were bringing in, in the case of the Taliban, heroin, Hamas, it was cocaine, into our country, over, through, and across our southern border, in conjunction with the very drug cartels that now are destroying Mexico. Barack Obama stepped in and stopped the indictment of those people. They were, they were about to be arrested. And the, the program stopped. 
Why did Barack Obama do that? Well, the charitable view is that he wanted to be able to tout his deal with Iran. Or probably the Taliban. Uh, the less charitable view is because Barack Obama is one of those people who wants to see the country taken down. I stand with the latter. He's a cultural revolutionary. And in my judgment, a godless one. Uh, we're not being told the truth. There is a pattern of murder.